Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rotopose pre-lock show for Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. And let's get right into things. We have a massive slate to cover here um, on Tuesday. It's 12 games, and let's start with pitching. What are your takes on pitching, Matt? Has anything changed from last night? No, Aaron Nola is definitely the guy for me, and I've been looking at his stats a little bit more to try to figure out why he has struggled to start the season. Um, if you look at his ERA, it doesn't seem like he struggled. He, his ERA is 261 through 10 and a third innings, but he's only at 6.1 Ks per nine. So I guess that's seven strikeouts and uh, 4.35 walks. Um, so the peripherals haven't been good. FIP and XFIP are in the mid fours. Um, but the sample size is just so small. And looking at his velocity numbers, I was actually looking at his uh, pitch movement numbers, the horizontal and vertical movement numbers. They have that at Brooks Baseball. Um, all of it looks the same. The only statistic that's changed for Nola this year is that batters are just making more contact against him and specifically on pitches outside the strike zone. Um, I think there's a lot of flukiness to that, but anything in 10 innings, um, it's it's hard to trust any any stats. So I don't see much reason to change the outlook on Nola based on his bad start. Uh, there's no noticeable change in anything besides the results. Um, so I, I still think Nola is the best pitcher on the slate. If you look at the odds value there, um, the Phillies are minus 200 favorites with about an eight over under, which is comparable to guys like Strasburg, DeGrom, um, Sale and Severino. I think the implied runs against Nola is about the same as all those other guys, and he's much cheaper. So Nola's my favorite pitcher. I'm not quite sure if I'll be all in on him. But I think I'll be pretty close. Uh, so Nola's the clear-cut number one. Do you feel any differently, or do you think you might even use Nola in all of your lineups? Yeah, I agree. I think I will use Nola as you know, this my I guess my secondary pitching option in all my lineups, and then pair him with a couple of the other guys we'll touch on soon. But Nola for the price definitely seems like he has the most upside, and he you know could very well easily be the best you know value pitching play on the slate if. He proves to be, you know, the Nola that we all know from last season. Yeah, so I guess the the interesting debate then is who else to use at pitcher. And I still think that the next best value is Strasburg. Um, I think he's a better pitcher than Carlos Martinez, who's in the same tier. And I guess those would be the choices because I think Sale and DeGrom are just too expensive. Um, if I had to choose between those two, I still think it's DeGrom. Like, the Yankees are a really tough matchup, and I know Stanton has struck out a ton this year, but um, the Yankees have a bunch of really good hitting righties. Uh, we have that lineup out now. It's a little weaker than usual um, with no Brett Gardner in there, but against a lefty, I don't think that matters too much. So we've got Walker leading off, Judge, Stanton, and Sanchez, middle of the order. Not, not an easy spot for sale. Um, and then guys like Tyler Austin, Miguel Andujar, Austin Roman, and then Shane Robinson starting. Um not a lot of guys that are scary there, but they're all right-handed, and DD is in there too. Um, this is definitely a negative matchup for Sale. I'd be okay with him, except he's expensive, and the Red Sox haven't been letting him throw that many pitches. So DeGrom over Sale, but I think I'll have very little of either of them, probably zero Sale, and just... I think some DeGrom in stacks that are cheap enough where he fits, but I think a very small amount, if anything. Um, so then between Strasburg and Carlos Martinez, I guess that's where you're landing too, right? Like one of those guys with, with Aaron Nola for the most part. Um, so how are you weighing those two options? Um, at first glance, I was heavily reliant on or leaning on Steven Strasburg purely because of the matchup, um, the upside and, you know, the total, the implied Vegas runs, the Braves are implied to score 2.72, which is by far the lowest of any team on the slate tonight. And all the underlying peripherals, you know, suggest that Strasburg has a better matchup. But after, you know, the Brewers released their lineup just recently, we just got it. They are without Christian Yelich, obviously, and they don't have Lorenzo Cain or Ryan Braun in their lineup tonight. Um, they're going with, you know, a much weaker lineup, I would say, compared to their normal starters. And I think that, is you know leaning me towards uh almost the balance of Carlos Martinez and um Steven Strasburg. What about you? Well, I still think I'm heavy Strasburg. Uh, the Brewers lineup definitely looks strange. 
But the guys they're missing, I think, are a little bit overrated as hitters. Like, Lorenzo Cain is a good player, but a lot of his value is defense and base running. Um, the same for Christian Yelich, who's out of the lineup. Ryan Braun is still a good hitter, but he's right-handed, and also he's a lot less good than he was earlier in his career. So I don't think it's a huge deal that the Brewers are missing all those guys. And Martinez has these big righty-lefty splits. Uh, the Brewers do have some lefties in there. So Eric Sogard leading off, he was pretty good on base percentage-wise last year. Um, but either way, he's left-handed. Eric Thames left-handed. Travis Shaw, Jonathan Villar is a switch hitter. Uh, Brett Phillips batting seventh. He's a decent prospect. Like, I won't call this Brewers lineup a scary one by any means, but I think we could call it an average lineup. Like, it's an easier matchup for Strasburg, and he's better than Carlos Martinez, and Strasburg's only marginally more expensive. Um, Martinez gets enough strikeouts that he is upside, and I think it's worth using some of him, but especially, well, I'm not sure about ownership here because Scherzer just shut down the Braves, complete game shutout last night. Uh, Carlos Martinez has recency bias working for him too because he was really good in Milwaukee in his last start. He had a complete game shutout. So I'm not sure who I think the public will use more of. But I do think the expected output for Strasburg is higher because he's better. I think his matchup is slightly easier. Um, negligible park factors. Both are pretty neutral. Washington and St. Louis. Both National League games. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to go with Strasburg because he's better. And I, I think Martinez could be more highly owned. But I think that I'm unsure enough where I'm not going to base this decision on ownership. I think Strasburg's a better pitcher. Uh, and that's really the bottom line for me. But I'm, I'm not saying fade Carlos Martinez. I'm just still – I'm still heavier on Strasburg. So how much do you think – how much Carlos Martinez are you willing to use if you made, you know, 20 lineups? Maybe four or five lineups. Like, yeah, I think 20 to 30%, something like that. Um, because I think it also could make sense to use NOLA and one of the cheaper choices – well, they're really, it's, there are really good other choices. Like, I guess some Nola and DeGrom could work. I'm um, just kind of looking through the other pitching options because there really isn't anyone to be at all excited about. Um, a lot of bad pitching on this slate. So, What about Severino? Do you like Severino at 10.5K? No, I think Severino will be very low owned. So there's upside for him because he's just really good. But the matchup is brutal. Like, I... I don't I don't really think you can justify using Severino over Strasburg. I just think he makes for a contrarian play, but that's about it. Like, I think the expected output there is pretty low. Um, so I don't have much interest in Severino. Also, the Yankees go to their bullpen earlier than most teams because their bullpen is so good. Um, it's a it's a, an important game for them. I guess in divisional games, I would guess they're just a little bit more likely to use all their relievers because the game matters more to them and the best way for the Yankees to win is to use their relievers as much as possible. That's the strength of the team, or at least pitching-wise, that's the strength of the team. They do hit a lot of home runs. So, yeah, I, I don't have much interest in Severino, but I do think you could mix him in, uh, especially if you make any Yankee stacks, which I'll get to. Like, there's correlation there. Um, I'd have Martinez ahead of Severino, but I have Strasburg way ahead of both of them. And I think I will have Aaron Nola in all of my lineups because it's just such good value on him. And there's so many decent pitching choices on this slate at the high end that I don't think Nola's ownership will be out of control. And also, he hasn't been that good to start the year. So I think, at, especially at lower stakes, a lot of people won't be using Aaron Nola, and we don't have to worry about him being too chalky. So I think I'll say Nola in every single lineup, and then maybe 70% Strasburg, 20% Martinez, 5% DeGrom, 5% Severino, something like that. Um, are there any other pitchers like the cheap guys, though? that you have interest in. Um, and I guess Patrick Corbin could be in play, but I don't have interest there. Tough matchup. So I don't know. Is that all the pitchers that you'd be targeting or is there anyone else that stands out? Yeah, that's essentially it. I was thinking about maybe using Aaron Sanchez, but hey, the matchup is, it's kind of tough. Um, I do think there is a route to you know him having a good game at that price, but I don't know if it's worth it to, you know, use him. Yeah, he just doesn't strike anyone out. Like, that's my problem with him. Um, he, the, the lack of strikeouts really caps his upside. The Orioles strike out a bunch as a team, though. So. They do, but it's not like they're among the league leaders or, ever, or anything. Last year, they had the ninth highest strikeout rate 
Um, so it's like, yeah, they strike out more than average, but it's not like they're going to boost Sanchez that much. And Sanchez also just hasn't been very good to start the year. His control has been all over the place. Um, I think he's a lot better of a real life pitcher than a fantasy pitcher because he's not going to be able to work deep in games without, um, having better command. He walks a lot of guys and he doesn't get the strikeouts. So it's just, there's not a lot of upside for him. Like, I guess he's cheap enough where he could do well, but I think there might be other guys priced around him that are better picks. Like, well, Aaron Nola is barely more expensive, but I guess you're kind of talking about using them together. Um, I think I'd rather take a shot on Felix Hernandez. I think I'd rather take a shot on Sean Manaya. but I think I'll just go with expensive pitchers, uh, Nola and one expensive pitcher for most lineups and kind of just stay away from the cheaper guys. Yeah. I agree for the most part. I was just trying to fish around for maybe a random option. Um, one other name, actually, it's a guy who gets a lot of strikeouts that could be intriguing is Mike fulton Um Tough matchup for him, but 6.6K for a guy that gets strikeouts, like there's upside there. There's a very, very low floor, but no one's going to use him, and I do think there's upside. So I don't know. If I had to pick a guy under 7,500, he's probably the guy. And my favorite choice of anyone below Aaron Nola is probably Felix Hernandez because the Royals are just so bad offensively. And even though they scored 10 runs last night, they're still bad offensively. No one's going to use Felix. Um, and I, I think I said this last time he pitched. I think there's high ceiling and very low floor for Felix. I mean, he he has the capability to be really good, but most of the time he's not really good. So he could be someone to mix in a little bit especially in Mariner stacks for the added boost for correlation there too, with the win bonus. Um, so favorite pitcher cheaper than Nola for me is Felix. And then favorite cheap option is probably Fulty, but I don't think I'm going to use much of either of them. Yeah, I agree for the most part. Um, let's move to hitting. Um, for the most part, I think everything stays the same with these lineups. Uh, we don't have a Padres lineup yet. <clears throat> But we are anticipating a bunch of right-handers for, you know, between Renfro, Perella, and Margot. Are those still your primary targets for tonight, Matt? Yeah, the Padres are going to be my highest owned offense. Um, they're cheap. It's Tyler Anderson, who's kind of just average. The game's at Coors Field. Uh, the Vegas line movement supports the Padres a little. It's, it's the second highest jump in implied runs on the slate tonight, although the number one team that I'll get to in a second is actually way ahead of them in how much their implied runs has gone up. Um, so the Padres, the over-under in that game moment's at 10. It's 10 and a half now. It's actually, it looks like it's going up to 11. And the Padres were plus 150, now they're plus 140. So a little bit of sharp money on the Padres, a little bit of sharp money on the over. Um, the hitters are cheap and they do have some righties. The guy I'm, I'm the most interested in is Hunter Renfro, who had a 177 WRC plus against lefties last year. Um, he's a right-handed hitter. He's young. He has a lot of power. I don't think a lot of people know much about him. Um, I actually, I announced a game he did in college once where he had two home runs. So maybe I'm a little biased towards him, but uh, I, he is supposed to be a, a good power hitting prospect. And he hasn't been in the lineup recently because I guess they're not playing him much against righties. But against a lefty, I think Renfro is a really strong play. Um, everyone else in the Padres lineup, I think, is fine. Uh, Manuel Margot, if he's leading off, definitely like him a lot. Jose Perella, 3,600, should be near yeah. the top of the order. The lineup um, is fine. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. But yeah, go on. Margot, Perella, Hosmer, Renfro, Villanueva, Galvis, Asuaje, Hedges, and Lucchesi. Is that the official lineup that just came out? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, so definitely like same guys. Yeah, that doesn't really change much for me. Those are the guys I was I was expecting to be in there. Uh, Villanueva, I'm not sure how I feel about him. He's the second most expensive hitter after Hosmer. I mean, he's fine for game stacks. That's kind of just, I don't know, a hitter that people don't know much about. I don't think he's particularly good, but the correlation, I, I'm fine with leaving him in there. But I, I, don't, I don't really buy into him being good just because he had one three home run game out of nowhere. Uh, I'm still fine with him in Padres stacks, though. So the, the other offense that, well, the team that's seeing the biggest jump in implied runs is the Oakland A's. And Hyunjin Ryu is just really bad. Like, he hurt his shoulder in 2015 and then didn't pitch much in 2016. I think he was out for most of that year also with a torn labrum. Last year, he was all over the place. He had a couple really strong games, but his 
strikeouts to walks were kind of just okay. I think it was like eight Ks per nine, three and a half walks per nine. His home run fly ball rate was really high. He gave up a lot of hard contact, uh, a lot of homers. And the Dodgers also don't have a particularly good bullpen right now. Like Kenley Jansen is their only really good reliever. Uh, and if they're losing in the game, Jansen's not going to pitch. Um, they lost Tony Watson. They lost Brandon Morrow last year. Their middle relievers are kind of just mediocre. So I think last year we would have said don't stack against the Dodgers because their bullpen will just kind of keep things in check when the starter goes out. But that's not the case this year anymore. Um, and the A's are really cheap outside of Chris Davis. And they're just – they're a pretty good offense. Like they strike out a lot, but they also hit for a lot of power. Um, and the prices are pretty manageable. Like they're – they're cheaper than the Padres. Obviously, the expected output is less than the Padres, but the A's could be my second favorite offense. Like, I, I don't think we're going to be able to fit in the expensive teams we like um, too much. Like, it's just going to be hard because the pitching is so expensive. Um, so as far as cheap offenses, it's Padres number one, but I think A's are number two. Uh, are you on board with that, or do you have a different take on Oakland? Um, I wasn't necessarily counting in Oakland in my – you know, research. I personally like the um, the Blue Jays. You know, left-handers or switch hitters in their lineup. And where was the other team? The Blue Jays just cost more. Like, I wouldn't really call them a cheap stack. Um, if you can fit them, I also prefer the Blue Jays. But I think it could be a little challenging to get them around Nola and um, or around someone like Nola and Strasburg without having really cheap plugs. Um, so yeah, pure expected output, Blue Jays over A's. But I, I do think it's actually somewhat close. Yeah, I like the right-handers on the Angels too. There's some cheap guys towards the bottom of the lineup between Simmons. Upton's not that expensive. Jeffrey Marte, not necessarily a good hitter, but righty-lefty splits against a crap lefty pitcher. Chris Young in there, 2.7 again, the seven hole. So some using some of those guys I think is a – you know, a pretty viable strategy against Martin Perez. Yeah, I'm just not sure that Ryu is really much better than guys like Kashner and Martin Perez. Um, there's a reason that the over-under in that game has jumped from seven. So, yeah, I'll give the actual line movement numbers. The over-under has gone up a full run from seven and a half to eight and a half. And the A's opened at plus 130 and are now only plus 110. Um, so their total has dropped. I mean, their total has gone up quite a bit, uh, almost a full run just on their side of the game. And there's a reason for it. Hinjin Ryu is very bad. Uh, he could get better because he was good at the beginning of his career, but that was four and five years ago now. So I'm not buying him being better. And I think we could put him in the same category of bad pitching as guys like Kashner and Martin Perez. Um, and the A's should have less ownership than the Blue Jays have. Um, they should have less ownership than the, definitely than the Angels have. I, I think the Angels could be – I'll say the Rockies are the highest owned offense on the slate, but I think the Angels could be the second highest. I think the Blue Jays will be fairly popular, especially Smoke and Donaldson and Granderson too. Um, so the A's could be more contrarian. And I think the expected output for them is pretty close to the Blue Jays and to um, was the other and the Angels. Um, so I think I want to have exposure to all of those teams. Like I'm not saying I want the A's more than them. But I'm going to be mixing around offense a lot tonight, especially because we have such a narrow focus for pitching. I just think it makes more sense when you're narrowly focused on one side, hitting or pitching, go with more choices on the other side just to diversify a little. Uh, and I think the kind of slate that we both prefer is where we really know who we like as our pitching choices. And then offense, we just mix it around because offense is just generally more unpredictable. Yeah, for the most part. So when we say you're going to stack the, you know, the Padres – and you don't necessarily like paying 4K for Villanueva, how would you go about stacking them outside of the three right-handed outfielders? Um, well, I will use Villanueva in most of the stacks, but I think throwing in Austin Hedges makes sense. Um, righty with power against lefties. There aren't too many good catchers. 3,200 for anyone playing in course field is fine. Um, but I think you could also go with four-man stacks and go with like a four and four with Padres and A's, Padres and Blue Jays, something like that. But I'll still have Villanueva in most of the Padres stacks. Uh, I guess the difference is I would plug Renfro, Margot, and Perella. Uh, I would use them as plugs in other lineups. Villanueva, I don't think I'll do that. But I, I have no problem including him in most of the team stacks. Got it. And a guy like Eric Hosmer, do you just ignore the lefty-lefty? Yeah. 
Um, well, Hosmer also using team stacks don't use elsewhere because there are other good first base choices. Like I think Matt Olson could be a better pick. Um, but also like, I'd rather just use Justin Smoke. I'd rather use uh, maybe Albert Pujols. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Pujols is 3,200. He's kind of just an average hitter now, but it's a good matchup. Um, yeah, I think I'll just find first baseman elsewhere, but definitely fine with including Hosmer in Padres stacks. Um, so I would say my favorite offenses, well, Padres number one, I think by a decent amount. And then tier two for me, it's going to be pretty evenly split between the Blue Jays, Angels, A's, and then also the Mariners. Um, we talked about them on the podcast last night. Uh, Eric Skolgalen's really bad. Uh, we do have a Mariners lineup, and it's pretty weak at the bottom of the order, but it's also really cheap at the bottom of the order. And D. Gordon, Gene Segura, Robinson Cano, Mitch Hanniger, Kyle Seeger, like one through five, that's – Cano's the only guy above 4,000, and Skoglin is one of the worst pitchers in the league. Um, the Royals bullpen is arguably the worst in the league. So a lot of upside for the Mariners, even in a pitcher's park, wind is blowing slightly out to left field. Like I think they could do really well. And I think a lot less people will use them than some of these other teams. So I'll put Mariners in there for tier two, maybe tier three. Um, I would probably have them just behind, uh, all of the other offenses we've mentioned so far. So are you, are you interested in the Mariners or you think maybe just use the righties as plugs? Uh, yeah, I was more on board with the righties as plugs, primarily Hanniger and Segura. Uh, Michael Marjama, you guys touched on on the podcast. He's starting tonight. He's a catcher, 2.1K. I believe Greg mentioned him. That's <clears throat> definitely an interesting plug if you're looking to pay up at pitcher. And But, yeah, for the most part, I, I don't know too much about Guillermo Heredia as a hitter. I don't think he's necessarily okay. a great hitter. but Yeah, he's not. But he's okay to use just for correlation, I think. Yeah, he's the right. He got the righty lefty splits. Two point six k is a very cheap price. Mm. So, I tend not to worry about the righty lefty splits as much when the pitchers are really bad. Um, and if the one thing that helps too is when you have a lefty who's in there to face a lefty, that means that the team is comfortable with them facing their bad platoon side, and that means you have almost no risk of them being pinch hit for late in the game. So like Dan Vogelbach. Um, if a righty was starting, I would worry that he could get pinch hit for later in the game when they want a better matchup. But since a lefty's already starting, like I don't see any reason why Vogelbach would be at risk to come out of the game at any point. Uh, so I think Vogelbach would make sense to use in some game stacks too. He's really cheap. Um, he's a prospect who has decent power upside. Lefty versus lefty is tough for him, but like I think he's fine. I think everyone in the Mariners lineup is fine to use. Yeah, so that – about those are for stacks. Should we talk about some plugs that we like outside? Um, well, I've got a question just to recap pitchers, and then I actually do have one more stack I'm sort of interested in, and then, yeah, we'll go to plugs. Uh, so to recap pitchers, I think we're both looking at using Aaron Nola in every lineup. That's the best value on the slate. Uh, it depends how much you, how risky you want to be if you want to use him in every lineup. Like, he's the clear-cut best value, so – if the idea is just to maximize the potential of all your lineups, use NOLA in all of them. Uh, if you want to diversify, maybe don't use him in, in quite all of them. But I think I will be using him 100%. And then for me, it's Strasburg over Carlos Martinez is the next guy. I think Nick is more evenly split on those two, right? But you do prefer Strasburg. It's just you maybe prefer him less to Martinez than I do. Uh, either way, that's the number two and three for both of us. And I don't, I don't really like too many other choices. All right. Should we touch on FanDuel? Have you looked over there? Yeah. Let me just – okay, let me cover this one other stack, and then I'm going to look at FanDuel quickly. So I actually think that there is some, some decent reason to play the Yankees tonight. Um, Chris Sale is really good, obviously. This is as cheap as the Yankees are ever going to get. Uh, the most expensive hitter is Aaron Judge at 4500 so the Yankees are actually pretty cheap tonight. Um, the Red Sox have an awful bullpen outside of Craig Kimbrell. So if the Yankees happen to keep Sale from – well, I guess they could strike out a lot and still do well. Basically, if Sale only pitches four or five innings because the Yankees run up his pitch count, um, and the Red Sox have been cautious with his pitch count. They want him to be fresh for the playoffs. Let's say the Yankees score two runs in five innings against Sale, and two of those runs are solo homers, and then Sale's out of the game. There's a lot of potential upside against the Red Sox bullpen. The Yankees are going to have really low ownership, and they obviously have really good hitters. There's a reason we've stacked them almost every day they've played this season. 
4,400 for Stanton is just ridiculously low. He's probably the best power hitter. I would say he's definitely the best power hitter in baseball. Judge is close. Gary Sanchez is really good. Like, we don't need to talk too much about how good the Yankees are at hitting. So if, if they happen to get sale out of the game early, the ceiling could be really, really high. Like, I, I don't think it's a likely scenario, but if I'm making 20 lineups, I think I want one of them to be a Yankees stack. I think that actually will get you overweight to the field. Like, I think they'll be lower than 5% owned. Um, so if you're making multiple lineups, like, I, I have no problem with the Yankees stack. They're cheap enough. There's huge upside. There's definitely a very low floor. Um, so I'm not using the Yankees as plugs. I don't think that makes sense. But as a full game stack, I think uh, – the Yankees' first five hitters, or maybe just the first four hitters, I think that makes some sense. Yeah, I happen to agree with you. They're, the prices are very low on the Yankees. And I think, I feel like in those types of matchups, when it's an ace versus a, you know, a good team, either one side of the you know pendulum is priced low, giving creating some sort of upside on either side if that outcome were to happen. Like, usually we wouldn't be surprised if we saw Chris Sale priced at, like, 11 or 10-8 against the Yankees lineup just because of the matchup. Right. And I guess I'll say it like this before we move on. Like I, I'd be surprised if Sale gets completely rocked, but I wouldn't be surprised if he goes, like, four innings with six strikeouts, four walks, and the Yankees just run up his pitch count, and that's all he pitches for the night. And then the Yankees get five innings against the Red Sox terrible bullpen. Like that really wouldn't shock me. I don't think it's that unlikely of an outcome. Um, and then you're looking at half a game of Yankees underpriced hitters against bad relievers at Fenway Park, which generally is a pitcher's park. Um, but for power righties, it definitely is favorable to hit the ball over the green monster. So it's it's kind of a quirky park where it's favorable down the lines, especially for pull hitting home run hitters. It's a deep park to center. Uh, but if they get to the bullpen, I mean, Judge Stanton and Sanchez could just tee off against the Red Sox bad relievers. So high upside, very low floor play, definitely contrarian. I think it, it's worth having a little bit of exposure, but not much. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's move to plugs. Okay, and then we'll, we'll get to FanDuel briefly before we end. But, yeah, let's let's look at the plugs first. Um, One guy that catches my eye that – is really cheap is Yerkson Profar hitting second for the Rangers against Tyler Skaggs. 2.5K just seems way too low for a guy that's, you know, that high in the order. Uh, Wilmer Flores is another guy hitting three hole against Caleb Smith, a left-hander, righty lefty splits, very bad left-handed pitcher who, you know, has proven to be somewhat fly ball prone over the first couple of starts. And any of the Rangers righty, I mean, the Mariners right-handers against Scoglin, we already touched on. Paul DeYoung is a, you know, not the best value, but somewhat of a good value against Brent Suter hitting second. Um, righty, lefty splits, 3.9K at a shortstop position. Anything else catch your eye? Um, well, I actually don't think Caleb Smith is that bad, but I still agree with you anyway on Wilmer Flores because Flores is just really good against lefties, and that's a really cheap price for him against any lefty batting third. Um, so, like, I'm not interested in the Mets because of Caleb Smith. I think he could be an okay prospect, uh, but I do like Flores. I think that makes sense. Um, then the other guys you mentioned, I think there are a lot of guys on Texas that could be considered. Like, Skaggs is okay. He's very high-variance pitcher with the strikeouts and the walks. He could give up some homers. So Profar, I think 2,500 for a number two hitter is always a good value, even though I'm, I'm not sure that Profar really is good at hitting at all. But he does have shortstop eligibility and second base eligibility, so he's going to be someone who's easy to fit in. But I think Andrews and Beltre make sense too. Like, they're both cheap, especially Beltre. Um, we talked about this a couple of days ago. Beltre is almost way too good to be 3,200 against anyone. It's a lefty pitcher against him. And Skaggs isn't even particularly good. So I like Beltre a lot. Um, he's probably my favorite third baseman value on the slate. And then the Cardinals, yeah, I think Paul DeYoung makes sense. I think Marcelo Zuna, uh, even Dexter Fowler. Uh, and then Harrison Bader, I think, is a pretty decent hitting prospect. He's 2,900. Um, stacking the Cardinals probably isn't the worst idea in the world now that I'm looking at it. Like, I think you could mix them in. They're, they're really cheap, and Brent Suter is not particularly good. Um, maybe just as plugs, but I think the Cardinals do have a lot of value in their lineup. Those prices are just really low. Um, so I'm fine with any of them for plugs. 
And then I think that probably does it. Uh, Mike Moustakis could be worth considering, even though I do think Felix Hernandez is a decent upside play. Moustakis has a lot of power to cost 3,200 batting in the middle of the lineup. So um, I think I prefer Beltre to him for the same price, but using Moustakis is probably not a bad idea. Um, and then we really haven't talked about the Rockies. Like I'm probably not using much of them because of their prices, but Trevor Story, if you can fit him, he crushes lefties. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fine with Trevor Story. I think that's that's a good play, even though I'm, I'm, I do think the Rockies are just a little overpriced tonight, and it's just hard to fit them. But if you can get Arenado, if you can get Story, like those guys make sense. And then lastly, for plugs, uh, the A's are all cheap, so use them for plugs. Uh, Jake Smolenski, if he's batting near the top of the lineup, I think there's a lot of value there. He's twenty six hundred. Um, and then looking at the Dodgers, they're a little expensive and that probably does it. Yeah. Anyone else you're looking at or is that just about it? Yeah, that about wraps it up for me. Any last insights before we sign off? Um, as far as FanDuel, like I think DraftKings is substantially better tonight because FanDuel, you have to limit yourself to one pitching choice. And I really think that's hard to do tonight, especially on FanDuel where everyone is kind of just priced the same. Like, I think there's a case to be made for Strasburg. There's a case to be made for DeGrom, for Nola, for Car Carlos Martinez. Like, everyone's in the same price tier. So I think for me, I think I'm off FanDuel tonight. I don't want to have to choose one pitcher. Um, generally speaking, I think FanDuel is just worse for baseball because most of the stability we get from DraftKings is from getting to use two pitchers, and pitchers have more stable results. So basically, because you're using two pitchers instead of one, it's a higher percentage of your lineup that has more of a stable outcome. Uh, FanDuel gets a lot more unpredictable because only one of your nine players is a pitcher. DraftKings, it's two out of two out of ten. Um, so I just generally prefer using DraftKings for baseball. Um, and then you can only stack four hitters per team on FanDuel, so it's the last opportunity to build correlation. Um, not that I never play on FanDuel, but especially tonight. I mean, it's, I don't know how to decide between all of these pitchers that have like the same cost. So I think it's a DraftKings only night for me. I know you prefer DraftKings. So I don't know if anyone has any specific questions about FanDuel, feel free to throw them in here before we end, but you know, I, don't, I don't have really much to say there. Yeah, I agree. That, that does it for the most part. Um, I'm going to take a look at tomorrow's. So we have an early slate tomorrow. Um, if Matt is up in time, we will definitely cover that. But Yeah, I think let's plan to do that. We can uh, be back on for the early slate for tomorrow. Yeah, we'll touch base in the early and the late slate. So we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. As always, check out rotopros.com for any DFS content. And we will see you guys tomorrow.